Hey guys, James from Inventive Sounds, back with another video and today we're going to talk about mixing and more specifically about mixing your kick and your sub bass together in order to have a good sounding track. This is a very basic step of the mixing process, but it is also a very important one to get your mix right, because if the balance of these two elements to each other isn't right, your mix will never sound good no matter how many plugins you use. The kick and the bass are the foundation of a dance song. So the relationship between these two elements has to be perfect. Too much bass and your song will sound muddy, not enough bass and your song will sound weak. So in this project, we have a kick. We have a bass and we have a resampling channel. The purpose of the resampling channel is to visualize what is coming out of the DAW. So let's have an example. So here you can see the waveform of the kick. So the attack and the tail of the kick. If we look at the bass, you can see the bass here, okay? And now we can listen and see the relationship between the kick and the bass with no mixing. So as you can see right now, and as you can hear, it sounds muddy, it doesn't sound defined. And you can also visually see it. If you look here, you have the kick, and then you have the bass here that sounds much higher than the tail of the kick. And then the kick hits again, but you can see that the levels aren't right, and this is why the, 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 the energy isn't correct. According to me, that's not the ideal balance. Kick and sub bass relationship usually have a 5 dB difference and the kick should always be 5 dB louder. So here you can see that the sub bass is too loud. So let's correct that. To me, this sounds better. Let's have a look. Okay, so as you can hear and as you can see, now you have the kick, the tail of the kick and the bass, which is slightly louder than the tail of the kick. But you can see that now the gap between the, the bass and the kick is much more defined and it's much more um, balanced. Okay, so now that the level between our kick and our bass is better, we're going to use any cue on the kick and on the bass to blend the two even better. So I'm going to load up a Pro Q3 here to identify the, the key of the kick. So as you can see, the frequency hits here. And I'm gonna copy that EQ on the bass to make a low cut at that specific frequency. I could do a, a, a normal low cut like this, but I'm choosing to make it dynamic so that when the kick hits, the frequency is gonna lower itself. So to do that on the Pro Q3, I'm using that knob. And you have to select the kick as the sidechain input. And here you have to press that button. And so now the, the, the bass is going to lower itself when the kick is hitting. And to compensate for that uh, reduction in frequency here, I'm going to make a boost here. Right 
here. I'm gonna boost this with this. So let's have a listen. Without. So the difference is subtle, but it is there. And then I'm going to copy that EQ and I'm going to put it back on the kick. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to delete that cut. And I'm going to take this boost and cut the kick at this particular frequency to allow some space for the bass. And so now we have this. So if, for example, I cut the two EQs to show you before and after, this is, this is how it sounds. So as you can see, it sounds much more defined. Then the final step, is to put a sidechain on the bass. And this is how I mix my kick and my bass. Hope you guys like that tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like my videos. Have a great day, peace.